Hi, everybody. It's really nice to be in Minsk. Uh, it's my first time in Belarus, so yeah. Can you hear me? Don't scream. Full screen. Oh, wait. Sorry. Uh, yes, fantastic. Yeah. Let me just test it. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, uh, again, hi, everybody. Everybody can hear me, right? Yeah. Awesome. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, it's really nice to be here. And uh, as Google uh, Assistant is actually coming to more and more countries, it's very exciting to be talking about Google Assistant because it's a very new thing compared to Android, which was around for what, 10 years. Um, Assistant is something that you can just jump on and uh, yeah, and just start developing and become famous. And I will show you kind of we can talk later also about real examples, how you can get thousands of followers uh, and users and engagement uh, just in a few days. And by the way, um, I do speak Russian, uh, but it's just easy for me to speak English. So if you have any questions afterwards in Russian, I will be happy to answer them also in Russian. So just feel free to you know, use whatever language you want, English, Russian, German. Uh, so yeah. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Google Developer Expert, GDE for Assistant. I'm lead for Google Developer Group and Women Tech Maker Group in London. I'm based in London. Um, yeah, I'm mentor for Google Launchpad. Google Launchpad is a seed stage startup incubator created by uh, Google in London. So I'm helping startups uh, use AI uh, technologies uh, in their uh, applications, kind of find um, a usage of AI and their products, um, but also help them in, uh, in the marketing side because I used to work as a marketing uh, uh, person at Google. So now I work for Motorworld. It's a New York company. But before that, I used to work uh, back when I was living in Germany for Google, first in Munich, then in Hamburg. So if you have any questions also about, uh, you know, life or work at Google uh, or, you know, GD, anything, you can just feel free to ask me, find me afterwards. I'm here till tomorrow morning. So yeah. Uh, and then uh, last two things, I'm also, I did my PhD in quantum chemistry back uh, when I was at the university. And the last thing, I love teaching kids how to code um, as part of the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which is Code Club uh, or Coder Dojo um, clubs. And we're teaching them Scratch, Python, uh, Microbit, all kind of technologies, which hopefully will prepare them to become next stager brain or, uh, well, next uh, just good developer. So that's it. Now about the voice. So I'll focus first uh, mainly on kind of voice general, but uh, since I'm a Google developer expert for Google Assistant, of course, uh, my, 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 my main focus is Google Assistant, and that's what I'm using uh, and developing for. But uh, I also used to develop uh, before Google Assistant for Alexa, Amazon Alexa. That's why, uh, yeah, that's kind of very general thing. That's why, uh, yeah, let's get started. So um, when we look at the history of technology in general, uh, you can see that there is a Parading shift uh, every 10 years. So uh, every uh, technology goes through the kind of new idea, then it goes to frenzy when everybody gets crazy and the idea gets you know, super popular. And then it becomes, it scales and goes into you know, mass. Like imagine if Google Home will start selling. Uh, there is a Google Home in Belarus, right? You, okay, so once it will come here and then start scaling, right? Uh, people get kind of calm. Okay, everybody got Google Home at home, so it's nothing special. Not even like per one per home, but actually one per room, which is uh, complete normality in Europe or in, uh, in, in the States. And then it will go through maturity stage. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. That's a very uh, sensible. Um, so maturity. And then at that time, the new idea comes. And in this case, for mobile. And the same stage goes, uh, it goes through again, frenzy, again, scaling, and then again, maturity. And right now, we are at that stage where we don't know there are two competing technologies. One is voice development, voice first development. And then another is AR, VR. So they're kind of competing with each other. And people kind of argue which one will go you know, further and will become the next big idea. But I personally, as a Google Assistant developer, of course, hope that that will be um, the voice uh, revolution, uh, even though I have nothing against AR, VR. So you can see here, I put here both um, things. But right now, we're here. So you can see the idea is already there. And people start developing. There are actually more than 1 million uh, Google Assistant apps out there, 
more than that. Uh, so we are already at the stage of frenzy where people, you know, think that it's fancy, you know, people start developing, asking you tons of questions, you know, uh, getting lots of uh, users. So like I have heard, I don't know, but like my husband is Android developer. So and I heard that it's really hard to get your first thousand, first five thousand uh, users on Android. And uh, just to compare that, I, I got my, uh, for my very first Google Assistant application, which I developed, I got five, oh, well, six and a half thousand followers in just three days, which was amazing. And uh, I, was, I will tell you later how I did that, but yeah, that was really cool. And I think that everybody can do that um, in your career. And just, you know, it's just something that will prove that you're on the right path. Um, so, uh, yeah, so how did it all start? So Sunar Pichai uh, in 2016, so he said that we are now living in the AI first world. And that is where mobile first world kind of died, kind of. So uh, people started uh, looking into AI and people, use, uh, they usually think that, you know, uh, this is where, you know, Google started working on AI or on Google Assistant. That is not exactly true because uh, Google had lots of, lots of, lots of research in AI and machine learning and deep learning and all kinds of these things. Uh, uh, long time before they launched Google Assistant, that there was a, a, a basis of preparation. I will show it uh, later also why. So let's go to the next one. So um, Gartner is like one of the most respectful uh, kind of organizations in Europe. And they said that it's not just a new technology, you know, like, uh, Let's uh, compare like a, like a watch, you know, like a smart watch or something else, like a, let's say smart TV. But this is a paradigm shift because we are no more, you know, using something we used to use, but we actually have to shift our mind and start thinking in voice interactions and in conversational interaction. And this is completely new. Now, my favorite uh, person probably in startup world, uh, Gary Vee, he's actually from Belarus, no? I'm not so sure. I think he's originally from Belarus, but he did his like, kind of wine business in the US, uh, United States. He immigrated very young um, age, but he's amazing. So he said that people who built right now agencies or startups based on voice, they can become as big as size of Pandora, Facebook, Instagram. For those who, I don't know if there is Pandora here, but it's like a Spotify basically but in the States, I think. Uh, so yeah, and that's, that's something that you have to think about. Uh, there are lots of lots of agencies right now in Europe which start offering, not just you know, Android apps or iOS app, but they start offering Alexa skills and Google Assistant skills, and they get so much attention just because there are that many of them. And if you will jump on that wagon, you can become, you know, the next Facebook, maybe not Facebook, but you, will, you can get lots of uh, popularity, fame, money, well, everything you wish for uh, as a developer or as a CTO. And uh, now a little bit of overview. So um, remember I told you that uh, Google actually wasn't late to the market. So as you can see here, we have, uh, so you can see Google Assistant came actually in 2016. And you can tell me, wow, that's quite late. You know that Siri was there, Cortana was there. But we have to remember that Google Now, which is the processor of Google Assistant, was around for quite some time. And that is something that was similar, not exactly, but similar to Google Assistant. Uh, of course, it's a very rudimentary kind of comparison, and I understand it's not the same. But Google themselves, they think so. And they often actually mention Google Now, that's something they did for a long, long time. They collected feedback, collected usage data, and then they relearned and they relaunched it as a Google Assistant. And then, um, of course, uh, I don't think we should compare to Siri because Siri is such a close ecosystem where developers pretty much have nothing else, uh, nothing to do unless you work for what Uber or you know Deliveroo, some big startups which can do partnerships with Apple. So that's different. Now, um, why Google Assistant? So just a few uh, slides because I want to keep it very open, you know, in case somebody wants to develop for Amazon Alexa. I want to keep it very broad, but I still want to pay a few slides, pay a little bit of attention to Google Assistant. Just quick question. Can you actually publish skills here in this country for Amazon Alexa? Okay, no. Okay, Google Assistant. But uh, I, I, I know that there are not everybody is from Belarus here, so that's good uh, in terms of like um, you can exchange experience during networking time for those who already published, you know, so that once it's available here, you are ready, you have your own, you know, apps, and you can just uh, go, you know, full uh, speed. 
and earn all the you know, fame. So why Google Assistant? So first of all, um, Google Assistant has amazing background. I'm not saying that Amazon Alexa is bad, and they are really good, and I used to develop for them. But so Google has, so if you see the, first of all, user input. So you can type and you can speak. That's important, because people usually forget that you can actually type in Google Assistant. And people usually complain, well, my English accent is not really good. But well, just type. Um, then there is a personalization. So there are three types of personalization. Google Assistant. First of all, is the location. And that is something that Google uh, Assistant does in two different ways. First is the exact location of your Google Home, for example, device, where it has a like geo coordinates. And then there is a approximate location where it's like a city and postcode, which is enough in some cases. For example, if you want to check weather, you probably don't want weather, you know, uh, what are the clouds above you know, my home? So that is something that uh, you have to remember. Second is time. And then uh, people sometimes ask me, like, what kind of personalization is time? I mean, time is it's kind of there. It's not personal to me, right? Well, not exactly. So uh, Google Assistant has something which is called routines. And routines are really cool. Like in the morning, you wake up and you are like, you know, you can just say, good morning, assistant. And then it can order you your usual cafe from Starbucks, your, you know, read you your morning news, and maybe, you know, order Uber to your workplace, because they know that that is morning for you. So there is kind of personalization based on time, your time. And then next thing is the authentication. This is something that um, I don't use much, but it's something that, for example, if you pay for Netflix, uh, you might want to ask a Google Assistant, so uh, did I actually, when did I pay my last bill for Netflix or for Hulu or uh, whatever the services uh, similar to Netflix are here? Sorry, I just... I didn't research very well what are the competitive, uh, but I'm sure we have lots of uh, services you pay bills for. So yeah, this is something you can use um, that for Amazon, for example. And then there is Google Assistant. And then there are three types of outputs. So here, people usually forget about a uh, question. So people uh, usually think, OK, Google Assistant gives me answer, right? So yes, but for example, when you book a flight with Google Flights, um, uh, the, and you ask, I want to book a flight, uh, let's say, from London to Minsk. Uh, Google Assistant can ask, ask you uh, back a question instead of telling you, you know, oh, it's all booked. Probably you don't want that. So they will actually ask you, you know, what is your preferred airline or what date you would like to fly uh, on? So that is the question which you get. Well, answer is uh, obvious. I don't want to kind of stop on that. And uh, then there, is, there are actions, which are also one of my favorites. So um, Google Assistant is absolutely amazingly integrated with smart home. And when we talk about smart home, we usually think about you know, smart bulbs, probably. But it's so much more than that. So you can integrate, and you can use Google Assistant for that. Uh, Google, uh, sorry, Assistant is the key for that. You can integrate with microwave, with fridge, so there are Samsung produces amazing fridge where you can you know watch YouTube videos with um, you know cooking recipes uh, during while you're cooking, or um, the last thing they launched Google Assistant I believe it was like three weeks ago. So right now they integrate with more than 40 different security devices for home, which means um, you know the, the cameras in front of your door, uh, cameras inside, and of course. Um, there are thermostats, there are pretty much anything you, you wish for, it's all there. So if you want to integrate with smart home, it's a little bit advanced stuff. But if you are not you know, afraid of challenges, I would definitely recommend you, because it's really, really exciting things. Now, um, there are more than 500 million devices where Google Assistant is running on. So uh, can you raise your hands how many people have been to last Google I.O. Uh, like this year, early this year? OK. Anybody? OK. Anyway. Uh, it's OK. Uh, so basically, uh, the amazing things about Google I.O. was that every place you went, every sandbox you went, every single place there had Google Assistant, uh, be it the car or watch or uh, soundbar you know, in front of TV. So everything right now. So Google is uh, really focused on integrating Assistant to every single device. And there is even a joke among Googlers that you know, if you want to get popular and make your, you know, uh, make your product somehow successful at Google, you just you know, add Assistant to that. And that's partly true, because Assistant makes uh, interactions with devices devices like soundbar so much easier like we still have at home old soundbar and we you know we actually have to click those buttons and kind of do use some menus but um uh, before assistant but now not anymore we can just talk to that you know um now this is a device i put so uh right now i'm waiting for 9th of october uh because as you know google is launching uh 
I don't know if I should supposed to say that, but this is leaked uh, information. Of course, you all saw the on Android headlines. But the the number four smart display is coming, and that will be it's actually very cheap. It's uh, cheaper than Lenovo and uh, GBL. It will be just 149 uh, what, dollars. And that is something that uh, I, if you want to, you know, be successful right now, you you shouldn't just develop for assistant. You should also optimize visually for smart displays. You know, put images, optimize scale and everything. And if you have any questions, how to do that? You can either uh, come to me later, specifically if you have any questions, or you can find me on Twitter later. Uh, I'm on Twitter just as my name. So yeah, and then there are lots of lots of lots of languages. I'm actually right now checking. Are you here? Well, yes. Ah, yeah, but Belarusian, oh, Russia is good. Okay, awesome. No, sorry, I just, uh, I don't know, I'm so puzzled because people told me, like, you better speak English than uh, Russian here, but Russian is actually totally okay. So, um, yeah, amazing. So, Russian is here, and you can already develop for Russian market, I think, since, what, May, right? Or maybe, basically, beginning of this year. You can develop, and then uh, I think you can publish them since... Uh, months or two months ago. So it's a very new thing, but the good thing about that. So when the new market launches, you have to be there. Like uh, when German market was launched, I immediately optimized my app and localized it to German. And I got four, well, four, 4.2 times more engagement and users than on English market. Just because, well, if you are the only app in that category, I mean, obviously people will, will use you, right? And then I will, sorry, I will just distract a little bit. Mm longer. There is such thing that explicit triggering and implicit triggering. So when you do it explicitly, you say talk to and then app name. But there is such an amazing thing which is called implicit triggering and it does ma magic. Like when first uh, Googlers told me like you have to, you know, aim for implicit triggering. I was like, I'm not famous. I'm just, you know, uh, in the developer, like a solo, you know, but it actually worked even for my app. So right now, for example, I developed an app which uh, you can ask, do I need a sunscreen? Because when I, we went to Dubai the, earlier this year for DroidCon, um, uh, the sun was crazy. It was plus 54 uh, degrees Celsius. So, and I just asked myself, you know, I want to know what is the UV index for sun, you know? Do I actually need, what kind of sunscreen I need? And I asked Google Assistant and they sent me to Wikipedia to read, you know, what is sunscreen. I'm like, that's not what I want. And what developers do when they don't find what they need? They develop that, right? That's what I did. So I developed that application, and now I can just ask. I, I mean, even if I'm the only one who is using it, which I'm not actually based on, I, that's amazing, because now I can actually ask it. And I actually ask, well, we just came from Milan, uh, the, the Fest Milan. And I ask, you know, what is the sunscreen? Do I need sunscreen in Milan? And it's four. The UV index is four, which is very low. So they said, no, you don't need sunscreen. I didn't ask for uh, Minsk, but I think it's like around four, three. So yeah, anyway, and implicit triggering, even people who don't know, and that's very important, about your app name. They don't know about you. They don't know about your existence, which is can happen. You are, I mean, at least I'm not famous. Um, they can still find if they will use the right keyword. So for example, if nobody knows about Uber and they ask some, let's say some grandma asks, you know, like, um, you know, I need uh, a ride from my home to my grandma, uh, granddaughter place, whatever. Um, then Google Assistant will suggest Uber or Lyft because that is something that fits uh, her query. And that is something uh, that I'm seeing right now. People have no idea that my app exists and maybe actually still don't know. But they ask, what is the UV index for Moscow? And Google suggests my app in a very smooth way. And this is something you should aim for. You should create something that even if people don't know your app name, uh, they can still use that. Or if you develop game and somebody just asks Google, okay, Google, I would like to play a game, you can still be in suggestions and if users will choose you uh, over some other plays or games, sorry, then yeah, then you won and you will, it will actually shown, be shown in your statistic as implicit triggering. So you will actually know exactly what people search for to find your app. And that is so useful. So analytics is really amazing. Anyway, so yeah, and Google Assistant is coming to so many countries this year. I think it came pretty much to <laughs> everywhere this year, uh, uh, to all these promised countries, which were promised at Google I.O. So yeah, that's good. Now, about voice. So we are coming back a little bit to general thing. And by the way, uh, I won't uh, kind of show you today code in Dialogflow because I mean, you are, we all are developers, right? So you can just open Dialogflow and open uh, you know, Firebase console and just do that. So there is a documentation for that. So what I want to do, I want to kind of hopefully inspire you and um, 
I encourage you and, uh, you know, let you know that, yeah, this is the next big thing. So just go, you know, and develop things. Uh, so yeah, voice. So voice is a really natural thing. So pretty much I have a little daughter, which is, I don't know where, <laughs> but yeah, she's uh, almost two. And, you know, she just started bubbling and uh, talking and actually her word number three after mama and papa is Google. So, uh, which is probably, I don't know if it's a good idea or not. So, uh, but yeah, and you can see that she started, you know, talking and kind of trying mm, saying new words. So voice is so natural. She has no idea how to click menus. She has... Oh, well, she already figured out YouTube, unfortunately, but yeah. Uh, but still, voice is something that is super nature of her. And um, as you can see, if we compare human-to-human -human interaction and human-to-computer interaction, uh, we learn how to speak to each other much, much earlier, like really 100,000 years earlier. So what a person, I think, you shouldn't really, you know, try to change the way we interact with computers to make computers, you know, uh, to kind of, you should match computer the real life conversation. You should teach computer uh, the natural way because that will ease the the pathway for new users. Uh, and you probably all saw the Italian Nona who was like uh, saying, "Okay, Google, okay, Google." I don't know if you saw this on like what is it, Nine Gag? But yeah, but this is something that even uh, older people like. Okay, my mom is not very old, but still, she just said, "You know, okay, Google, play her favorite music." And she learned it what, in two seconds while I was actually in the other room making our daughter sleep. So this is very natural. You don't need to learn anything. Now, I want the next two slides, I want to focus on two principles, which are kind of scientific principles, which are coming from conversational, the science called conversational design or conversational UX uh, user experience. So our first principle is too less, too much, okay? So this principle is where uh, you should exactly provide as much information as needed. And uh, you are like, well, it's obvious, right? Of course it's obvious. When I talk to some human being and I'm saying, yeah, I'm going to, you know, mobile optimize conference. It's not like I'm saying, yeah, I'm going to mobile optimize conference. It's a conference, it's in Minsk. So Minsk is the capital of Belarus. So Belarus is a country and well, country is this like piece of the uh, land, you know, and uh, well, there is like, the universe, etc. So you just provide as much as you need. But sometimes when people and I, when I see some other apps, you can see those mistakes. Sometimes people forget. And like at the bottom, you can read. So um, sometimes people create an action and they're like, uh, to read the next SMS message, say read message. And to, you know, to move to the next message, say next message. And to delete message, say delete message. Well, of course, I mean, that's of course you say delete to delete, right? Uh, so you shouldn't overflow your uh, interaction with machine with this uh, completely absurd um, kind of dialogue or monologue. So you should make it so obvious that if people say delete, it actually deletes. And that is very easy to make, but people forget, and that is not okay because there is um, one principle that one uh, kind of prompt from machine should be one breath. Um, so when you <gasps> You say you have that, you know, air in your lungs, and you should say it in one breath, not in ten of them. You know, so it should be very s short uh, and concise. Now coming back to here, so you can see that you sh have to be cooperative. And when we talk to each other, sometimes if it's not enough information, we can ask. You know, so I can be like, yeah, I heard you started dating. I don't know, like uh, Alex and. Um, and uh, she'd be like, yeah, Alex, uh, I'm like, who is this? Uh, we studied together. Oh, you mean from university or from school? So we always help each other, you know, when we talk by asking some tiny kind of additional questions. But it's very hard because with machine, you actually have to make those additional questions as a separate, you know, uh, dialogue. And you can see here, do you know who is coming to the party? So a machine. If it's, you know, completely machine without any optimization, we'll say yes, because it's obviously yes, no question. I mean, do you know? Yes, I know. But that's not something we want to know, right? I mean, if I ask, then, well, I do want to know who is coming, but that's not clear. I mean, it's clear for us, but not for machine. And the second, uh, there are like hundreds of such examples if you, you know, deal with this on a daily basis, but I just kind of put two to make it uh, kind of obvious. And second, can you play a song for me? And then if Google Assistant cannot play, they can say no. And this is, you know, it becomes uh, somehow, well, no, but why? What happened? And then there is second principle. There are, I only picked two because there are, again, lots of them. But so the second principle is the maximum of quantity. And here, 
the conversation is not just a literal exchange of information, okay? So here, first example, I really need a drink. Have you been to Eagle? The answer. So what can we know from this? It sounds quite to machine would never reply to that, uh, but it actually means that Eagle is probably a bar, and it's probably also very close, so you probably shouldn't take a flight to go there. Second example, what is the letter from IRC? IRC is a tax, uh, tax uh, organization in the States. And then, are you sitting down? Which probably means uh, there is a huge bill from tax organization, right? And the last one, how many people are going? It's my wife and myself. So even such simple example, Google Assistant cannot count that there are two people. It's me and my wife. So this is something that you have to optimize for. Um, now, all seen as examples, timer. When timer goes off in the morning, alarm clock, I usually say thank you. You know, some people I know say like shut up or something, which is not really nice, even though it's just Google Assistant. But if you say thank you, uh, Google Assistant will actually stop because that is the prompt to stop it. And then, oh yeah, I'll just skip that. So now, uh, very quickly, the last thing which I wanted to focus on is the top five UX, um, voice UX versus uh, screen UX uh, tips. So I'm not focusing on every single one of them because I just kind of want to give you an idea and then you, you, know, you all can Google. Uh, otherwise, it would take you know, a couple of days of workshop. So first is create persona. And here it's important to remember that persona, it conveys so many things. So there is a voice, there are messages, there is uh, style techniques. And I, again, realized that persona is so important. Just last week, I went to the store, um, to actually two stores, uh, to check bags. Um, from Chanel and then, uh, and then to check shoes in Converse. And it, it's amazing that when you enter Converse, they, uh, at least in London, they greet you in a very, very kind of, like, a, not a hey dude way, but you know, they're like, yo, like, you know how it's going, you know, what are you up to, you know? So it's kind of a very informal way, even though I don't know the seller, you know, shop assistant at all. But when you walk in the Chanel sh store, they are like, would you like a you know, cup of coffee, a cup of tea, here's a Seat, could you please let me know if you got five minutes to show me your likes collection? So you just to understand um, the personas are completely different, and that's how it's supposed to be in your app. And then people tell me often, uh, yeah, this people often tell me like, oh yeah, well I'm not very good, you know, with English and like oh, whatever persona, it's like just additional uh, things, you know, which I I don't want to care about. But the thing is like, uh, your app cannot be without person, uh, without persona. If you don't assign any persona, it will be just kind of pieces of some, you know, random personas which are just happen to be in your app. So you have to really work on that. And again, there, are, there is a documentation, but persona is really important. And again, remember the comparison which I just experienced myself, Chanel versus Converse stores. They get that. The stores, uh, walk to different stores, you know, some street art, uh, some street wear, and then to some high level, you know, some fashion from whatever Italy uh, store, and you will see that. Um, now, uh, so um, what is, why persona is important? Because persona gives uh, people three things they get from that. Even if they don't, don't know you, they think about, are you intelligent? They actually understand from the way you, you, know, you talk to your Google Assistant. Second is trustworthiness, especially it's about, you know, if you develop something like um, medical things, like, you know, UV index. If I would be like, yo, dude, you know, UV index in Minsk is like, uh, yo, 11. So that is not okay because people should trust you. This is the almost medical information. You should sound like you are expert in what you are saying. Uh, and the last, sorry, and the last is likability, which is obvious. I mean, you should uh, want people to come back to your action, you know, again and again. And if you sound awkward, people don't want that. Second, think outside of uh, box. So as developer, uh, I know uh, usually uh, Google Assistant developers, they are as a former Android developer, so they're like front-end developers. They're coming from other development backgrounds. You know, they are not just appearing because they used to be, you know, oh, sorry, uh, like, I don't know, dancer uh, or whatever, a singer in, the, in the, like yesterday. And usually you used to think in the flow charts. And this is something you have to forget. So you have to, okay, forget. You have to think in dialogue. And now, especially guys, they, they feel uh, quite awkward. Like girls, you know, they're very talkative. And uh, when I develop my actions, I usually sit at home and just talk to myself, you know? Oh, you know, what is the weather? And like, here it is. And like, what else? And like, thank you so much for your permission. But um, if you are not talkative, just, you know, talk to your cat or to your colleague or to your, you know, girlfriend or boyfriend. And that is something that you have to do because it's really, really useful. 
Now, context matters. So very important. Uh, remember at the beginning I told you about context like uh, location, time, authentication. So there are lots of other things. For example, there is a temporal location, uh, which what happened before, what happened after. You know, if I order it, uh, for example, Uber, maybe I can come home and turn on Wi-Fi or those kind of things. You know. And then uh, number four. In the conversation, there are no errors. And that is important to remember. So voice is very, very different from, uh, let's say, Android apps. Why? Because voice is very personal. I saw, like with my own eyes, that people get so much frustrated because they think that Google didn't understand their voice, didn't, didn't understand their accent. And as uh, myself being twice immigrant, uh, I certainly feel the same way or felt the same way when my accent wasn't yet, you know, uh, understandable enough for Google Assistant. That's why definitely don't say, I don't understand you. So uh, try to, you know, ask in a different way. If uh, you ask, you know, what time is your fly, uh, flight, uh, you try to say, you know, so what exactly are you flying? Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Uh, what is, you know, uh, yeah. So basically try in a different way so that people don't feel that Google Assistant just doesn't get you and doesn't want to help you to, you know, be understandable. Yeah, so no, I don't understand you things, okay? And, uh, yes, yeah, so sorry, I'll just, oh yeah, and the last thing, number five, is think bigger. So this is very important. So when you give user, uh, when you give user application, you always have to think that user, even if uh, Google Assistant didn't understand you, they actually have intent. It just they cannot explain. So you always have to analyze in analytics what they try to search, what they try to talk to your app, and then try to add those uh, conversations into your app. Because if user thought about something and asked your app, it probably means that it was important for them, and they thought that your app were supposed to do that versus it wasn't. And that is just, uh, sorry, just uh, too much. Yeah, dialogue. Ah, yeah. And the last thing um, is that how to enhance the kind of next step. There are two ways to enhance uh, your application is using SSML. Just kind of uh, remember that or take a photo. But this is something that to make it natural, you know, to make this <gasps> or like, you know, uh, to make your voice maybe added accent, etc. And then there is second way. And but you can use sound library if you want some cat sound, some alarm sound, something, you know, something. So those are very cool things if you want to make it, you know, sound much more natural. And yeah, so if you want to learn more after this talk uh, and you didn't find me uh, afterwards, you can go to the actions design, you can go to documentation official, you can go to code labs, amazing code labs, by the way. Uh, especially number three, it's like very kind of, it's at that highest level right now. One to three, definitely uh, recommended. And then you can check resources. And I also added here my own blog. So I'm blogging on Medium about Google Assistant. So if you want to learn more, every month I'm posting what's new in Google Assistant, in Google Home, in Dialogflow. So yeah, uh, then you don't need to read, you know, 20 blogs. You can just read uh, one blog. <laughs> um, that's all. Thank you very much.